you know it's true love when your husband will squat next to you, knees spread, while you're holding a utility <laughs> knife. You know it's true love right there. Or being stupid. <laughs> or that. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Imperfectly Me Crafts, where craft beer and handcrafts combine, usually in a messy way. I'm Mallory, choose behind the camera. We are gonna start off with a beer pour. This is Noon Whistle Brewing Company, and they did a collaboration with Buckle Down Brewing, and this is called Chumminess. It's a rye IPA, and it's a 6.5 ABV. As I pour here, I just wanted to mention, Chu and I are doing St. Baldrick's this year. Um, so March 12th, we'll be at Metal Monkey Brewing Company to shave our heads. We will be bald as the day we were born. I had a lot of hair when I was born. No, you didn't. Any donations we get uh, will be going for children's cancer research through St. Baldrick's Foundation. It's a great charity. I have the link in the description below if you want to give anything, a dollar to any amount. It all goes to help the kids. So. Yeah, plus all this is enough to make, I think it's either three or four wigs. So I'm gonna be donating the locks of love as well. Hopefully we'll be able to help out a lot of folks. All right, let's see how this one smells. Um, citrus peel and something grainy. Well, probably that rye is in there getting that me in the nose. A little bit of hop, but it doesn't smell killer, which scares me a little bit. Now the Candon list IBUs, so I'm going in blind on this one. Cheers everyone to another craft. Wow, that has huge flavor. There's so much citrus and um, the, the white of the peel, uh, citrus peels, the pith, you get that too. Almost like a wheat, but it feels heavier, feels darker. And there's a lovely hot finish. I'm talking one, one and a half bunny foots on this one. So it's nice and gentle on the hop. You said it was heavy? Uh, heavier than a wheat. So it's not a wee heavy, it's a wee heavy. It's a rye. Oh. <laughs> Dork. Forget that. <laughs> Stop. Rewind. Rewind. <laughs> this one is absolutely gorgeous. I'm really glad we picked this one up. Okay, we are going to get going mm. on this craft. We picked up a nice big canister of just quick oats. Craft. I am creating a noon whistle for noon whistle. If you've ever seen like the old cartoons when they were going to like lunch breaks and stuff, they had that whistle, they'd pull the cord and it would go, you know, really loud steam train whistle sound. That's what we're doing. This is just a cardboard tube. I'm not going to give it to them saying quick oats. It's going to be metal. Hence why we cleaned and filleted all of these beer cans. Remove the pop tab and get to work on the label. We might have been drinking some noon whistle at home before the craft started. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna get these stickies off. I'm going to be using my Goo Gone spray gel because I love this stuff. Now, this stuff is super oily, so you will want to use some dish soap to properly wash your hands and the can afterwards. So there is a nice clean can. I'm gonna do this six, seven more times. For each one, we are also going to be removing the top so that it is easier to cut. I found a can opener works pretty well. Do watch out for sharp edges. So once you have the clean cans, we're gonna be cutting. There we go. There's our sheet of aluminum. I am gonna be cutting off the sharp edges and I'm going to be making eight sheets just like this one. 3M high strength contact adhesive. Always read your instructions, always, especially with crazy adhesives. And I will make, well, I can't make two leaves this time because he's holding the camera, but we will do our best. I do anticipate getting some adhesive where I don't want it. Hopefully not on my husband. Shake the can well. Shake, shake, shake. Oh, I always have to have a drink while I have a shake. It doesn't work out great. <laughs> okay, drink and shake. <laughs> okay, that was a little tricky. Oop. It's flying all over the place. We're gonna go right on the front here, right over the, ooh, that just sprayed all over our garage, didn't it? She's trying to make it perfect, guys. Apparently she hasn't read the name of the channel. I don't believe in perfect. Except for your husband. Smile. 
<laughs> so about that cameraman position. <laughs> All right, so line that up with the top. And I'm okay if it doesn't go all the way to the top because the top's going to be hit. I'm gonna overlap these a little bit actually. A little bit of duct tape there to hold down the side. All right, I'm gonna let those two dry up before I move on to the next section. And when you see it again, it'll be entirely covered. Oh, here you see our cleaned up, glue removed, noon whistle base prototype. I love Goo Gone. It is the best stuff ever, especially married to a person like Chu, because it removes adhesive. It doesn't remove me. No, it doesn't remove you, darling. <laughs> as much as I try. It's Goo Gone, not Chew Gone. <laughs> if anyone invents Chew Gone, let me know, because I'm first in line. The thing of oatmeal, I still have the lids, so it ha gives me the exact diameter that I need for the top of this cone to sit at. So we are gonna be using this very thin piece of cardboard as the frame for our cone. I'm gonna fold it, bring the corners together. I'm gonna to tape this, and then I'm going to put the lid inside. All right, so I have the basis for my cone. Yep. I am going to glue along the outside edge. We're gonna use a can from the pantry. Ooh, try bean blend. Put that in there exactly how I want it. You want the cardboard to come just a teensy bit past over here. We're gonna be trimming up that cardboard and having the metal come a little further down so it covers where the plastic ridge is. And I am going to be putting just a simple layer of super glue around the far edge. Put the lid back on the super glue so Chu doesn't glue himself to anything. I, I need to let that dry. And then I'll be using the same process to glue the aluminum over top of this cardboard. Next, we're going to look at what's going inside the body of this thing because that, I needed help. I, I'm not great with electronics. Chew, however, is really good at that stuff. Setting up a 12 volt battery to two car horns and having a switch to set them off is way beyond my means, but he has offered to help. So the next section, we're gonna have Chew's help in figuring out this thing. And if we have loud horn honks, I'm sorry to the neighbors. You're gonna watch Chu do some crafting to, today too, and it doesn't involve super glue. Yay! That's gonna be boring. We'll get you a beer, you'll be fine. Woohoo! So Chu tried to explain this to me because I am not into electricity. I don't like it much, uh, except for the warm and the light. Um, <laughs> With the battery, we have positive and we have negative. The negative wire, which is the black wire, is going to be attached here. Using this little clamp, it slides right onto the um, terminal. Where, the terminal, thing huge. So that is going to go up and be connected to our switch. We're using a button switch for ours. After uh, the negative goes through the switch, it comes up here and attaches to the bottom bracket of the horn but it will continue on to connect to the other side. Our positive side will be actually our white wire because we were out of red wire. This will be traveling up and around and connecting to the top two terminals of the horns. I have one thing to add. Only one? Wow, yeah. I did good. With the switch, when it's, everything's connected, uh, by not pushing the switch, it's going to be an open circuit. Meaning no power. Correct. That means there's an open, basically like somebody cut the wire. Okay. When you push the switch, it's going to complete that circuit. And that's how it's going to go from, you know, all the way through and complete the whole circuit. And, and the horns are going to be loud. Yes. Cool. So yes, uh, you, you want to be generous with your cord mm -hmm. use. 
we're gonna get right on just to the wiring and making sure everything is connected and correct. So this is a 12 volt battery. 12 volts, five amp hours. So um, this actually just slides onto the metal. Super handy to get it done a little quicker because you can just sneak the cord in there. In the, in the blue part, and then you clamp it shut. For the battery, it's better to have these slide-on clamps. Yes. Yeah. The reason why we have two, do you know? Yeah, of course I know. Why? Right, explain it to me. Why do we have two? <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. We have two because they're at two different pitches. As far as steam trains oh. go, uh, when you hear a steam train, it has uh, mul multiple pitches going at once. That's why it sounds so odd to our ears, why it's so distinctive. I wanted two car horns in two distinct tones to recreate that sound. Okay. Yeah, one says 410 hertz. Mm -hmm. The other one says 510 hertz. Correct. Black wire for negative. And you want to strip off the insulation. I always go about halfway. And you always go away from you. Alrighty. And I want about twice as much as, yeah, twice as much as that. But I do it in two, because if you do it in one long one, you gotta take that much off at the same time and it's harder to get it off the wire. Twist it. So folding it first yes. in front of the camera. Well, not there. And then to get it in the hole, if you rotate it and push in. Yep. Cool. So you can just barely see it. You see it? You see it? Take care. Take care. Take care. <laughs> There's a reason I don't let him in front of the camera, guys. 18 inches. <laughs> with a negative wire. Going to the switch. Hey, guys, I just want to point out something to you that I didn't learn until I started this channel. Those of you who watch these tutorial videos, you have no idea how hard it is to do your crafting where you have to hold it out in front of you. You're so used to keeping it close to you, close to your body. When I'm doing a craft, I hold it close and it's, it's like part of me as I'm working on it. But while you're crafting up for the camera, you have to hold it out in front so everybody can see proper. If you notice, there's a couple times where Chu's having a little trouble with this. If you go back and check my early craft videos, I had the same trouble. Like, I had a heck of a time remembering that other people are watching. Now, I've been doing it on purpose just to prove this point. Bull. I have no problem remembering. Bull. So yeah, any of you crafters out there who are thinking of starting your channel, learn to hold your craft out and away from you. <laughs> Practice it before you start filming, because man, that's a hard lesson to learn. Alright. When you connect wires, disconnect it from the power. <laughs> so you don't get a little Power shock. the last thing you should connect. We have finished up with the initial wiring, or Chu has rather. This was all Chu on the wiring. Thank you, Chu. In case it doesn't work, you can blame me. <laughs> yes, yes, that's exactly what it is. Uh, huh. We have our battery right there. We have our black cord coming up 18 inches to our green switch. Then we have eight more inches to the first horn, which then connects to the second horn. For our positive side, our red side, or rather our white side, because we didn't have a red cord, we have an 18 inch cord coming up to the first horn and then the second horn. Now, with all of this hooked up, everything should be a go. All right, everyone. We've got the body of our noon whistle right here. 
We use the top from the same container to make sure that the lid would be the same size. Obviously, this still needs a few modifications. I'm going to be trimming down the cardboard around here. I am going to be adding a little duct tape to make sure this stays nice and tight closed. And then we are going to be coating the whole thing in aluminum just like we did on this. After that, we are going to be on to assembly. Oh, I almost forgot. We ha still have to drill a hole to make sure that we have a spot for our button for the noon whistle. So to start with the lid, I am just going to trim right along. You look right here how close that is to the edge. The cardboard, I want the same length all the way around. I'm gonna have the metal go a little bit further past that once I put it on. You can see right there how that's gonna fit right on there. Oh, it looks like a little noon whistle already. Look at that. I'm going to start by folding this over the same way I folded over the cardboard. But I'm gonna do it the opposite way this time from where this seam was. So I need this to slightly overlap so you don't see any of the cardboard. And you see I do have little points sticking down on the edges, but those will be covered when I do the next layer that's going around the bottom. Oh. You're putting it here. Well, I have a couple concepts for that, but I won't really know until I get into it. Until I actually get to that point, I can't really tell what I'm doing. So that's kind of how my crafts work, actually. That's part of why the channel's called Imperfectly Me, because I have some planning. I have, I guess, a vision in my head of what I want it to be. And then I just try things until I make that thing. It's how I've done a lot of things throughout my life. And it seems to be working pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it so far. Things don't always turn out perfect, and I'm okay with that. It's, it's life. <laughs> so I'm just gonna keep rolling with it and see where it takes me. Also from Noon Whistle, we are having the Rubik's IPA. I kind of love the can art, but it reminds me of that Qbert game, you know, with the little jumpy guy and the little springy snakes and stuff. You know, it just says IPA. It doesn't tell me anything else. It, well, it's 7.2 ABV, but it doesn't give a description. It doesn't talk about what hops they used. It doesn't tell me nothing, so, <laughs> except keep cold and 7.2. I actually already poured this one. It just wasn't on film. I am still in the market for a cameraman, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but here is the color. It's, it's hazy, which, you know, usually they're hazy IPAs. They call them gummies. And this one wasn't called a gummy, so I'm not sure if this is a hazy or not. I guess we're gonna find out, so. I mean, it smells a little juicy, but there's not a huge scent to it. A little bit of hop, maybe some citra, maybe a little Simcoe. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to jump right in. Cheers, everyone. You taste citrus, but I think that's more the citra hop citrus than like real citrus. And it's it's hoppy. This one, 2.5. Oh, really? 2.5, this one's, this one's hoppy. It didn't make me do a hoppy face. It had enough sweetness to even out the hop. Like, they evened the bitter with the sweet quite well on this one. But that's really pretty, actually. It's not generally my style, but I like that a lot. So we're going about even on both sides. You see the two points? And I'm giving myself lots of excess so I can trim it off later if I need to. And oops, get that back up here on this. You have a problem putting stuff on round things, like beers on coasters. <laughs> I've gotten a lot better at that. <laughs> All right, we're going now. It's going. It's going. It's going. Heading on the highway. I was hoping that song was going to stop after one line. <laughs> Don't know what the words are. So I'm singing it my way. Oh God. Well, we just lost all of our viewers. <laughs> Born to be crafty. Crafty. I need more beer if you're gonna keep <laughs> singing. I think we'll come back to you when the, the hat's done. We're, or not hat. It's not a hat, guys. How rude of you to suggest it's a hat. It's not a hat. I'll meet you instead. 
I've got all the pieces glued on here. It's gonna need to dry overnight. All that's left for the top is the goo gun with a paper towel to remove the excess glue. Trim this around so it's even on all the edges. We have to drill a hole. We're gonna drill it about six inches up, so right about the middle, where we're gonna put the button. I don't teach people how to use power tools. It would be inconceivably bad of me to teach people how to use power tools. We are going to get to drilling this hole. We'll be coming back to you as soon as the hole is drilled. We got our hole drilled. We did do a little higher than six inches just because we wanted to put some foam and this was a little thick. So because of that, we raised up the hole for the switch just a bit. And I am going to be cutting circles of the foam to fit on top of the battery to keep anything else from touching the terminal. Get out my trusty utility knife. It's gonna be sitting on top of the battery so I won't have to fight with it as much, but yeah, there's definitely a good yeah. spot for those yep. cords to come through. We're going upstairs for some wiring. Oh, oh, can we get, it's, man, you do need a better videographer. I know. <laughs> and it's a videographer. What did I say? Videographer. Yeah, it works. Whoop, whoop, battery in. So now we're feeding the wire through. I will take that and I will take that. And now we're going to take one more and feed the. Ooh. Then we have the washer and nut to go on the back, which have to be fed down the wires. I need you to push on the sides of the button there while I start getting this screwed on. Next, the 18 inch is getting attached to the negative on the battery. You know what, they can't see that. And then we are going to buffer the edges of the battery so we're back to our pillow fluff. We'll make sure it goes down far enough where it I'm, get... I'm keeping it far from the terminals. I'm just using it as a brace. I think we got our battery. Oh yeah, that ain't going anywhere. Now, the positive has to be hooked. Yeah. Next, we reattach the wires. So this one comes to this horn. He's attaching his. So that is initial assembly. I gotta finish up the lid, pop the lid on top, clean it up, and this guy is ready to go. All right, folks, so here we have our nearly finished noon whistle. Uh, the front of a noon whistle would have, it'd be a steam whistle, so it would have the hole for the steam to come out. I am going to be drying that on with a paint pen today. That'll go on the front. We got our button here on the back. The ones I saw online, they were uh, the hole was rounded on the top, flat on the bottom. Make sure it's directly across from the button. So I have the button directly behind me. Flat line across. Does not have to be perfect. And then rounded line. And then I'm going to fix the making sure it's even as I go around. Hmm. Maybe I am. I can't set it down like that because it'll be on the button and it'll just honk at me the whole time. My very last step, and I'm super excited about this, I am actually going to mark this as having been made by me, which I have not done on any of these crafts that I've gifted to the brewery. I haven't put a signature on, I haven't put the channel name, I haven't put anything. I just gifted it to them. And for the first time, uh, Chu and I ordered stickers. Stickers! I have stickers, so I'm gonna put my sticker on the back. Oh, it's a little crooked. We're gonna have to redo everything. <laughs> uh, nope. <laughs> Ta da! I have a sticker! And now, here's for the grand reveal, because I know this is what you all been waiting for. Here we go. You ready, guys? <laughs> Perfect. I love it. 
I hope they like it too. It took us extra time to finish this one because this was a biggie. But I'm so excited. I'm so happy. I'm glad you're all here with me. Don't forget to check the description for uh, details on how to donate to St. Baldrick's for us shaving our heads in March. Please like, subscribe, share, all the fun things if you want to hang out with me while I make stuff for breweries. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great day, guys. Cheers, everybody. While you son of a... You dork. <laughs> I need to take a... <laughs> this is a swear word cover. We need to use this all the time just for us. Yep. We are starting out. We are going to need several of these 16 ounce cans. I'll drink them. <laughs> we are going to be making, making that. Words are fun. I do them goodly. We're going to make be making. <laughs> <laughs> Words are still fun. You do them goodly. Still. <laughs> so let me write 18 inches on this guy over here too. Yeah. It's really hard to draw an eight upside down. What? An eight upside down to the eight. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta hurry up, my nose itches. <laughs> You're out of luck. <laughs> you can't scratch your nose. Do da, do da. <laughs> I mean, I know people would look at this and say traditional. It's not traditional, but yeah. How would they do that? <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> I gotta pick my nose right now, but I'm on camera, so I'm gonna wait. Your nose isn't on camera. Yeah, but my finger would be. But the after. wire's not on camera either. Oh, but my finger <laughs> would be afterwards, so. How are you gonna do that? Mm. Give it here. <laughs> For goodness sakes. See, yeah. now that is a problem. Uh -oh. This I can't use. I'm gonna have to drink another one. <laughs> you poor baby. You know what? For the heck of it, push a button. <laughs> see, and he goes. You see that? You see that? You see it? Okay. But you shouldn't be allowed in front of the camera. <laughs> Make sure everyone can hear the little squeaky marker noises. Squeak! Squeak! That's a squeaky chew noise. Oh. And you go, and you have to make the sound. <laughs> I haven't tried gluing things while holding them before. I have. <laughs> chew has. That's how his hand got stuck to a table once, <laughs> twice. Yeah, all you one. A couple times, a few times, but it, it, who's counting? I'm hoping our viewers are. There needs to be a running tally of how many times <laughs> Chew glues himself to something. <laughs> if anyone's interested, I am still in the market for a cameraman. Hmm. <laughs> Ta-da!